Good morning. Welcome to all of you. There's a famous song by Jeremy Camp called Same Power. And we today have that same power to worship, power to again feel the Holy Spirit's presence. And we do it with the voices from people from both churches together, if you're with us. That power is for us freedom, which we are always reminded is not free. Praise God and welcome to worship. Let us celebrate today the power of the love of Christ that lives in us. That power is an amazing thing. One that causes us to clap our hands with loud songs of joy. That's what the psalmist said anyway. It's Memorial Day weekend and it's Ascension Sunday, another round of freedom and power. Our message this morning is going to mash those two together along with an affirmation for Ascension Sunday. Let's worship. But first, our call to worship. Blessings on you this day from our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day of his ascension. He sitteth at the right hand of God. Honor, power, glory, and majesty are his. Let us praise him with shouts of joy. We are called to be witnesses to this great wonder. We are called to proclaim God's good news of love for all God's people. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is, All hail the power of Jesus' name. Jesus has the power to rise to heaven. Then he's got power that needs to be praised. Let us pray. Lord, as you ascended into heaven, you left the disciples overwhelmed with joy. We pray that our worship and the words here this morning will fill us, your people, with that same joy, the joy that comes from knowing you and discovering your love for us and your will for our lives. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, 
and today we'll have it as a Lego play. Dear Theophilus, in my first book I told you about all that Jesus did and taught right up until he was taken up to heaven. This was after he'd given commands to his chosen apostles through the Holy Spirit. After he'd suffered, he showed them he was alive by appearing to them many times over forty days while he spoke about the kingdom of God. Do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the Father's promise that you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Lord, is it now you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah what Peter said. It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Our second reading comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, and again, a different kind of representation. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all. At the beginning of my message today, I'll be showing a video that links Amazing Grace and Memorial Day. I think it's a good thing to hear Amazing Grace again. Sing along. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that
Today our gospel comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Good morning. Today is the Sunday before Memorial Day. We will, some of us, attend a parade tomorrow. We'll clap our hands when the scouts wander by, waving at their parents and grandparents. We, who have kids in the parade, will be doing the same thing, waving and calling out so they know that we are there. We will critique the band, those of us who were in marching band decades ago. We'll be thankful there is a marching band. We'll see if the rows are straight, if they are in tune, and we will think back to the times in our lives when we had to get ready to march at Sherburn Pageant of Bands. This was always sort of a dress rehearsal for us at Morris, doing this parade at Memorial Day and then working all week to get the kinks out of the routine before Sherburn. And some of us will go to the end of the parade and there will be speakers and prayers and a 21-gun salute. There may be taps played. I hope there is. In Morris, an eighth grader will recite the Gettysburg Address. In Burlington, it will be a second grader reading Flanders Fields and there will be hot dogs after, because it's Memorial Day. And there will probably be flowers and flags and wreaths here and there around the cemetery as we all strive to remember our loved ones who've passed away. Even though Memorial Day was originally meant to honor fallen soldiers, it has become a time to remember all of the people who we've loved and lost. And that's a strange word, that lost word, because they are not lost, they are very much found but they are no longer with us. And it's Ascension Sunday. This is the day, as you might remember from the video of the kids telling the Easter story that as a child said, Jesus put on a seatbelt of clouds and went up into the heavens. This is the day that Luke in the book of Acts and in the gospel lesson for today described for us. It's the day that Jesus returned to the Father. Luke also tells us that Christ will come back in the very same way that he left. Luke tells us that after Jesus was gone, the disciples worshiped with great joy. So between the Memorial Day business and the Ascension Sunday thinking, that's a lot of special stuff going on, isn't it? And all of it is so very important. I wanna to begin today by showing a video about Memorial Day. I wanna thank Centerline Studios for sharing this, even if it's in preview mode, which means maybe they didn't wanna share it, but it's powerful and it's where we start today. Thank you again, Centerline Studios.
Have you thought about the connection? Have you thought about what Christ did and about what our American soldiers have done through the ages? I think I've thought about it before, but that video surely makes it abundantly clear. It's about freedom and it's about sacrifice and it's about remembering. And that video makes a crystal clear connection, just like the crystal clear river running through the New Jerusalem that we heard about last week. It's a crystal clear connection between church and state. And for this minute, we don't care. We are glad. In fact, bring on the church and state connection. Frankly, I suspect that we are sitting here are less worried about that connection anyway, but it's not politically correct in many places, sadly. Amazing grace. Grace given to us because God loves us. A wonderful free gift because we believe, because the eyes of our hearts are open to God. It's grace because we believe. What an easy way to receive abundant blessings. Paul told the church at Ephesus that God would be able to give them, and because it's part of what we believe, it's also given to us, spiritual wisdom and insight to better know Christ so that we might better grow in our understanding of all that Christ wanted us to know. Thank God for that spiritual wisdom and insight. I need that every week for sure. Paul says, once we latch on to the grace offered by God and his son, Christ, we will be able to have a new hope. The word hope showed up in our video, remember? Paul is talking about the hope that comes from being a child of God. Our hope is built on nothing less, right? And I bet that tune is rambling around in your head than Jesus' love and righteousness. When we fully believe that, that Jesus is all loving and all forgiving so that we too can be righteous, that's a big, big hope. Paul goes on. He said that that hope will then lead us to an understanding of what's in store for us, a rich and glorious inheritance. Just like Christ was lifted to heaven, if we continue to live into the grace that God gives, we too will have a rich and glorious inheritance. That's how it's described in the New Living Translation. Paul then says that with the eyes of our hearts opened, we will be able to understand better the incredible greatness of God's power. We said a few things this morning in our call to worship and in our opening prayer about the power of God. I wonder just a bit if that greatness of power is so big that it's hard to understand the greatness of it, even with the eyes of our hearts wide open and our minds able to have spiritual wisdom and insight. It's like infinity, maybe. I remember when my niece, Tony, was young, she told me she knew the biggest number in the world and I asked her what it was. She told me it was Googleplex. I asked her, what about Googleplex 1, Googleplex 2? She merely walked away. The largest number in the world, the ends of the universe, the microscopic cells and sinews in our bodies, all of that is hard to put, is a hard part of the understanding of the kind of greatness that we're talking about. How in the world can we discern the greatness of the love of God and his amazing grace? It's unfathomable. It's hard enough to maintain constant faith in the things we know that make sense to us, but it's harder when things seem supernatural, when they are hard to explain, when no matter how many times you read about it, hear about it, think about it, you still wonder about it. Eyes of the heart, it seems as if it takes more than that. But think again about the ascension. The disciples have been seeing Jesus on and off for 40 days. He'd fed them, he's helped them fish, <laughs> had even tested them a bit. And now in front of their eyes, with a seatbelt of clouds, he goes to heaven, goes up. And then two men dressed in white robes stand there and say, why do you stand looking up? If it were me standing there, I would have said something like, what do you mean? Didn't you just see what we saw? You know who that was, so why do you ask us? How are we going to live life now that he's gone? It was bad enough knowing he had died. And then just as we sort of get used to him not being alive and then being alive again, now he's risen to where? Where is he? Will he come back? Will he come and say to us, peace? We need that. We can't go on without him. You know, we still have so much to learn. What do you mean? Why do we stand here looking up? We don't know what in the world we should be doing. Frankly, I say that's what I would say. Probably for once I wouldn't be able to say a thing because for an instant, wouldn't we be thinking we had lost him for good forever for Googleplex years? We haven't. But the two white robed guys are right. We can't just stand here looking up at heaven. We have to be doing something. 
We have to worship and return to our Jerusalem with great joy, and we need to continue to bless God for the grace he's given us, his infinite and amazing grace. And Luke tells us that Jesus has promised that there is more to come. In 10 days, 50 days after Easter, we know that the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, and that's the great news, the amazingly great news for next week. That's what is in store for us now. The Holy Spirit will come to us with power, power that will open the eyes of our hearts for all kinds of things. There is an affirmation for Ascension Day. I just love the power of the internet. The eyes of my heart are enlightened often because of the power of the internet. Here it is. Listen again to this Ascension Day affirmation. This we believe about you, Christ. You are not only risen and alive, you are Lord. This is about your ascension, your ascendancy over the whole universe. You stand over and above all as the source of what is best in life. You stand as the ultimate victor over all that is worst. You stand above all powers and authorities as judge. You stand above all failure and weakness and sin as forgiveness and love. You alone are worthy of total allegiance and total commitment. You are Lord, our Lord, and our God. The English teacher in me can't miss the lines, you stand over, you stand as, you stand above. Repetition needs to get attention. And Jesus is the source of what is best in life. He is the ultimate victor above all that is worst in life. He's above all powers and authorities, all failure and weakness and sin. Why? Because he stands for forgiveness and love. So when the two white-robed men ask you, why are you standing there looking up? Tell them, I'm standing here looking for Jesus, the Savior of the world, to come back. But in the meantime, I will stand on the promises of God. Stand up for Jesus. Stand in the gap for others as they feel that their life seems to be lacking in the amazing grace that comes from God. And I will stand firm in the faith that Jesus is Lord. He died for me, and he's coming again to reign over the whole world. We are standing firm in the amazing grace offered to us as we celebrate the infinite love and dedication of both our fallen heroes, and our Lord. We're going to take a stand and proclaim that the most precious fallen hero is the one who fell and rose again, Christ. Today and always, remember to stand and look everywhere to see how there is hope for all who remember that our freedom is not free. Open the eyes of our hearts on that one, Lord. Let it be so. Let us pray. Merciful God, Raise our sights and our hopes. Even as we yearn for your glorious inheritance, we settle for so much less. Even as we long to behold the extraordinary, we keep our eyes fixed on the ground. Even as we hope to inherit your glorious kingdom, we keep our hearts attuned to earthly power. Even as we desire to rest in the arms of your love, we listen to voices that sow discord. May your Holy Spirit find us ready when the one who ascended on high returns to his own. We're thankful, God, for the many people in our past who have served this country, and for those who have died, we owe such a debt of gratitude. Help us to be ready to also stand up for people who live in oppression, worry and fear, and who are not able to feel the amazing grace you offer. We pray for those who we know and love who are sick, weary, and sad. Holy and living one, for those we have named and the ones whose names we do not know, hear our prayers. Life can be so good, Lord, for those of us who worship and praise you. Help us to see the joy and the beauty of your world, of the people in your world, and in the hope promised to us from your Son, Jesus our Lord. We are thankful for the many ways we are blessed. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. We want to see Jesus in the people we meet and in the days we live. We ask you to help also to, for us to be hands and feet for Jesus as we stand up with the help of the Holy Spirit. We ask all of this in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is called Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. Sing along.
And now this benediction. Christ ascended to show us the way, to clothe us with power, and to bring us eternal life. Trust the Spirit's power, and don't just stand there. Go as witnesses of the risen and ascended Lord. Go in peace. Amen.